I'm speaking to you in this season on the subject of wisdom. And uh, in a previous lesson, we did a basic overview of wisdom being the principal thing. Uh, Proverbs chapter number 4 and verse 7 says, Wisdom is the principal thing. A writer said that wisdom is the thing of principles. In other words, a principal person exercises the spirit of wisdom and it's impossible for you to have the kind of wisdom we're talking about without being principled. And so wisdom then definitely is the principal thing. The scripture says in chapter number 2 and verse 52 of the book of Luke that Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. So the whole process of getting into the realm of favor or experiencing God's favor starts with wisdom. Uh, because if one has favor, without wisdom you can squander your favor on foolish decisions or and, and squander your favor around people who don't appreciate the value of that favor. But if you work with wisdom, your wisdom then increases into your, your stature and then stature begins to produce the kind of favor that becomes very lucrative for, for one's life, for one's ministry, and the things you ultimately do as a human being. So wisdom then being the principal thing, the scripture says in chapter number 3, verse 13 of Proverbs, happy is the man or the individual that finds wisdom. And so wisdom is something we have to search for. If you look for wisdom, it's easy to be found. The Bible says in James chapter number 1, verse 3, If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that gives to all men liberally and abradeth not. So one can actually pray for wisdom, and God will give a person wisdom based on their prayer and their desire for, for wisdom. Wisdom is the kind of gift that once God gives it to you, it's not something that necessarily can be taught, but it is something that is imparted to you. And when God begins to add this kind of wisdom into a person's life and begins to release wisdom in your life, it is here and now that you begin to see a level of, of maturity, sometimes beyond one's years. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter number 9 and verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I like that. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Uh, what the writer there is, is saying is that respect and honor for God is the first place that wisdom begins. Uh, I find that in the 21st century, there, there is somewhat uh, a, a little disregard or disrespect uh, for God. And I'm, I'm speaking broadly now. Uh, a disregard for, for who God is, even the way we approach God. And so when the scripture says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, he's telling us something here. Uh, one that, that wants skill in God, one that wants uh, an intimate relationship with God, must have reverence and respect. And the way we communicate with God, the way we approach God, uh, the way we interact with God, uh, one has to, to exercise wisdom. One has to be wise in so doing. The message version has a very interesting approach to the way that scripture goes. It says that the wise person that approaches God will, will use skill in, in their approaching God and use insights in knowing God's holiness. And when one has wisdom, and approaches God with skill, and approaches God with respect, your life becomes enriched, and your years begin to ripen. He says, if you live wisely as you approach God, then wisdom will permeate through your life, and no one will mock you, and life will not mock you. I really like that. And so, so as we begin to pray for wisdom, uh, we, we ask God to show us how he wants to be approached and how he wants to be entreated so that we don't come before God frivolously, that we come before God uh, knowing that he's our heavenly father, but we come with, with a sense of, of uh, intimacy, that you are our God and, and we are your children. I am your son and so I respect you. And uh, as I increase in, in my knowledge of God and I, I then increase 
in my awe of who he is and what he does. And I do that all through the channel of wisdom. Wisdom then is going to release in our lives uh, a sense of not just knowledge, but a sense of understanding our purpose. Wisdom then gives us a sense of understanding our purpose in the earth. And so when we approach God with reverence and respect, and we say, God, we're asking you for the principal thing, and we respect him in that way, God then begins to reveal to us our specific assignment. And when he begins to reveal our assignment, our assignment could be anything. Our assignment, for example, Miriam's assignment was Moses. When Miriam first lays her eyes on Moses, he's just a little baby that his mom is hiding away. And uh, Miriam is 12 years old. Miriam's mom, Jochebed, puts Moses into a little ark, a basket that she made, pitches it, and puts Moses as a three-month-old baby into the river Nile, and Miriam watches Moses. And when Pharaoh's daughter comes to bathe and sees this little uh, basket and ark coming down the river, uh, Miriam then offers the services of a Jewish uh, mother to look after Moses. And Miriam watched over Moses in prayer, literally, for 80 years. Because the next time she lays her eyes on Moses, after Moses uh, is repatriated to Pharaoh's courts, the next time she lays her eyes on Moses is 80 years later. She's 92 years old. She had the wisdom to know her assignment. Moses' assignment was uh, the children of Israel. His responsibility was to take them out of Egypt and to the land that God had promised. And God had given Moses incredible wisdom. We see this in chapter number 34 and verse 9 of the book of Deuteronomy, where the scripture says Moses laid his hands on Joshua and all the wisdom that was in Moses was then released into Joshua because Moses' assignment was done. And so as we approach God in wisdom, God reveals our assignment to who our assignment is, to the people our assignment is. And it's very difficult to understand that with a lack of wisdom. It is now important that we, as believers, as we look for the principal thing of wisdom, we'll understand that wisdom then is better than all kinds of things. It's better than money. It's better than fame. It's better than popularity. Because wisdom then begins to help you not just understand God, but help you understand and navigate through life. Once a person has a particular dream map of where they want to go, it's going to take wisdom from God to help you go through that life and go through that particular strategy that God is giving you for your life. I want to just close by, by saying this to every one of us. Because wisdom is the principal thing, uh, when Solomon was asked by God for anything he wanted, Solomon at a very young age who was increasing in wisdom and increasing in stature prayed the prayer, Father, give me wisdom. And it was here that God was so impressed with this young man's mature approach to him. Solomon didn't come to God with a shopping list because Solomon understood that the fear of the Lord or the respect of God is the beginning of wisdom. And so when Solomon prays the prayer, God, give me wisdom, he was showing through that prayer his reverence and respect for God. And one of the reasons God gave Solomon his request, wisdom and other things with it, wasn't just the fact that he prayed for wisdom, but it was the way he respected and honored God. He didn't use God as some sugar daddy that was providing every need even though God could. He came to God with respect because the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. When we fear, respect, reverence, honor, and elevate God to his rightful place, it's then that we open the door to answered prayers. So when we say uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, we then begin to move in the principle of motion towards becoming more God-like, becoming more God-centered, to become uh, more trusting, and so it is here that I want to encourage every person as you make your prayer, pray for wisdom. Ask God to give you wisdom. But the way you approach God is going to be very important. As we enter into his presence, as we enter into his life, we then begin to respect, honor. And then the Bible says in Leviticus chapter number 26 and verse 9 that God will 
respect and honor the person that will revere and honor him. And so let me pray for you now. Father, I pray for every person that's asking you for wisdom that you will give to all men liberally and abrade not. I pray, God, that the law that you've imprinted on every person's heart would be released. Thank you for giving us wisdom. Thank you for understanding wisdom. Thank you for opening the door to wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Again, I'm Bishop Judah Bismarck from Marare, Zimbabwe, the pastor of New Life Covenant Church. Thank you so much for listening.